Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another watercolor project for you. Today I'm going to show you how to do this quick and easy grateful wreath. It takes just a couple of stamps, and I know you'll enjoy doing it. So let's get started. First, we're going to be using some Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor paper. This watercolor paper is 5x7, and I cut it in half to do this project. We're also going to be using the vine from the foliage set, this flower from the flower set, this branch from the mini flower set, and not this branch, but this branch here. Even though I showed you both, we're only going to be using one, and both pumpkins from the harvest set. I'm also going to be using these markers and some Distress Ink. So let's get to the project. First I'm going to be taking an oval die. This is my stitched oval die which is now sold by Art Impressions. But you can use any die that you might have. I'm just going to lightly trace with a pencil the inside of this die. And this is just going to give me a guideline of where to place my stamps so that I stay symmetrical with it on, within, the, within the oval. Excuse me. So now you'll notice I'm taking an eraser and I'm just taking off some of the, the lines because they were a little dark and I really just need the guideline. I don't need them to be super dark. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little pumpkin, the, one of the pumpkins. And because I want it specifically in a certain spot, I'm going to stamp it onto my stamp positioner. And this is going to allow me to position it exactly where I'd like it. So I put the pumpkin on, this is the larger pumpkin, I put it on my block and I'm inking it up with some sepia. Sepia is the color you use when you want to color something in with different colors. This is your base color. So I'm just going to stamp it right there in the middle. And then I'll move the acrylic piece around until I'm happy with its placement. Then I'll use the, the L shape of the block and just move it down. And then stamp my pumpkin right in the middle. Now I'm going to put a mask over that pumpkin because I'm going to stamp the other one right next to it. So I'm getting my, my acrylic stamp positioner out again. I'm going to take that second pumpkin, which is just a little bit smaller, and I'm going to ink that up with some sepia. And again, I'm going to stamp that right in the corner of that, of that acrylic piece. And then I'm going to move it around until I'm happy with its placement. And I kind of wanted them to be like pointing opposite ways. And that looks pretty good. So I just wanted to take a look at it. And what I'll do is put these, put the mask back on. And the reason I do that is because I'm going to stamp those, that flower, which I thought looked more like a leaf than a flower, onto the right and the left hand sides. So by doing that, I'm going to ink that up, I'm sorry, I'm going to ink that up in the olive green. And then I'm just going to stamp it a few times on the left and then a few times on the right. Of course you want to stamp it more than one time because you do still want to get that variation in color. That's going to give you your three-dimensional look. So I'm just stamping those, those leaves here and there. And then we'll continue with the vine making the leaves up on the sides. I just wanted a different type of a look right next to those pumpkins. Now I can take that mask off just to take a look at how those pumpkins look. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the branch. And I'm not, you can see here, I'm not going to ink it up all the way. I'm just going to ink up the top because that's all I really need. And I'm going to use the lines as a kind of a guideline. As you see, that line is curved the same way as that branch. So I'm just going to stamp it a couple times at the top. And then I'll re-ink it. And I'll do it a couple times on the right-hand side. And I'm going to twist it so that it doesn't look like it's curved out. It kind of is curved in. And then I'll ink it up again and put a couple more down towards the bottom, towards the pumpkins. And I'm leaving some space in between some of them because I'm going to put some of the, the vine leaves in there. And I don't want to have to fight with that, that branch to make sure I get some in between there, but I do want to see the branch. So as you can see, I'm showing you right here. There's a little, a little, oops, I'm showing you with my, with my paper towel. So all I'm doing is taking a wet brush and just adding some water to that side there because I needed, I, I stamped a little bit farther than I wanted to. So I'm just showing you how I got rid of it and I'm going to cover it up. You'll never even know that it was there except that I showed it to you. So now I'm going to continue stamping. And I'm stamping this, um, this yellow. So I'm, I'm inking up the top half of the vine only. And I'm just randomly stamping the yellow here and there. And the reason that I'm doing the yellow first is because I tend to get a little bit crazy with darker colors. So I usually go in with my lightest color first and that way I don't have to remember to leave room for my, my light color because I've overdone it with my darks. And it gives a nice, it gives a nice color when you go over it with different colors that match, kind of blends them together and it gives a nice different color, variation in color if you may. <clears throat> and then I'll just stamp a couple here and there. This is, um, I'm stamping this in brown because it's autumn and brown is an autumn color. And then I'm just stamping it on the other side a couple times. This is just so that I can keep it balanced on the right and the left hand side. I saw this, I saw this, something like this on Pinterest and I really liked the look of it so I wanted to recreate it with my watercolors. So now I'm just adding a few here and there and then a couple right behind, right behind those pumpkins. Gives it some depth. Now with all these fall colors I had yellows and greens and browns, I wanted to bring a little bit of red into into the into the scene. So I'm inking this little stamp up with some brown, some sepia and some red. And now I'm just going back to the sepia. Then I'll ink the little buds up with the red. And I'm going to stamp those on the right hand side. Just gives a little difference, adds a little interest. And now I'm just going in with my eraser and erasing any of those lines. As you can see, I didn't have to do much because they were very, very light. They were mostly in the pumpkin itself. So now I'm just going with my water and pulling the color out of the lines, trying to show some shadows and soften, soften those right up. I continue doing that on the other side of the pump, the other pumpkin. And 
Now I'm going to take some olive green from my palette. Just going to add some color just to the stems of those pumpkins to kind of pull that right out. They kind of got a little lost in there. I'm going to show you a little trick to make them stand out even more. But I'm just going to add just a little bit of green to them. Maybe pull a little bit of green into, into the pumpkin itself. And then just softening out some of those lines. Now I'm going to grab some of the brilliant yellow. And again, I'm going to add some more color to those pumpkins. I'm being careful to leave some white space. The yellow, if you've seen my videos in the past, the yellow I like to use on my pumpkins as a highlight color. But the white also, leaving some white areas, really brings out the roundness in that pumpkin. So I'm just continuing to add some yellow and blend out those edges. Then I'll come in with some orange and just try to add some of that orange behind those, I don't know, bumps or crevices in the pumpkin just to give them some color. I love, I love painting pumpkins for some reason. This is my favorite time of year other than, well, no, I think they're all my favorite. Every season is my favorite. I love the winter. I love to snowmobile. I love the colors in the fall. I love the colors in the spring. And of course, who doesn't love summer? These fall projects, though, they're so colorful. I just love them. So I'm just continuing to come in here. Now, making sure that... I'm layering on top of dry. So you want to let it dry between, these projects are so small and I'm not using a ton of water at all. So it, they dry very, very quickly, um, but it gives it helps to build the color up if each layer is dry before you drop in more color. So I'm just gonna continue to go around and add some more orange. And then I'll come in and I'll use some yellow to blend that to blend those colors out, maintaining that highlight of white. So right now I believe I'm just taking some clean water and just trying to just blend that out a little bit more. So now I'm just adding a little bit more color. You could have stopped way before this. You can continue to make them. It just depends on how much you want to do. If you didn't go as far as I did, then you would have a more of a lighter look. And as you can see here, I had another little boo-boo. So I'm just sopping some of that color up with my brush and then just adding just a bit more. Just a bit more orange to the pumpkin. Now I'm going to take my my fine tip of my sepia. I'm just kind of drawing in those stems a little bit darker. And then I'm going to add some more to some of the shadows to give them a little bit more of a darker appearance. And to enhance some of those Excuse me. I don't know why my phone just did that. <laughs> then I just ruined that little bottom part because I had kind of washed it away. So I kind of put it back in and now I'm just softening those lines out one more time. Which kind of is nice because it gives you a little bit more of a contrast. And now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just put some water on those flowers and those leaves and being sure I make sure that I leave some white space because that's always good. And I'm not using too much water because too much water 
would just wash out your the integrity of your stamp. So by do, just using a little bit of water, you can see the definition in those leaves and you can drag some more of that color out, but it really enhances your projects. So just, you can always add more water, but you can't take it away. So just be careful when you're, when you're painting that you don't have too much water on your brush. So as you see, I'm constantly moving my brush around. I'm tapping it. I'm not smushing it. I'm not painting with it. I'm just using the tip of that brush on its side and just jumping it around, touching some of that color. Just touching the color. And now I'm going, I'm just going in. I'm not even caring if I'm touching the yellows first or the browns. I think it all coming together, wishing together is just fine. And then just bringing those leaves right down to that pumpkin. And I'll continue on that other side. Just softening up and touching these little, these little leaves. And you can still see the branches that I stamped in there. Sometimes I tend to touch them with water. Sometimes I just leave them alone. I kind of don't really have a plan. I just come in with the water and just jump it around. It's amazing at the end when you look at it how much of a watercolor it looks like. It's the beauty of these, of this technique and these stamps that you can get the look of a watercolor painting without having to be an artist. So now, so now I'm coming in here with some steel blue and I'm just putting some really watered down color on my brush. This is where my sentiment's going to go and I thought it just needed a little bit of something behind it. So I decided to just put some blue to get some color in there and just jump in my brush around with a lot of water and a little bit of pigment color. It's really, really pretty wet. And then I'll come in here with some additional color. So this is going to sit right behind that, that saying. It's just going to make it stand out a little bit more, I think. I just got a little more color in my brush. I'm just kind of dropping it in, not really caring, letting it, letting the water take it and do its thing. So as a final to my watercolor piece, I like to have a little bit of sparkle. So I'm using my Winca Stellar and I'm just kind of jumping it around to add some sparkle and some shine. Winca Stellar is a water-based marker. It's a water-based it's not really a marker, but it's water-based. So when you paint with it or when you jump it over these watercolor paints, it is going to continue to blend those colors, just like if you were adding water to them. So just be aware of that. You don't want to spend too much time. You kind of just want to jump it around. Sometimes I have to clean it off because it's got color on it. But it mushes everything together, and I think it looks really cool. Okay, and then just a little bit more to those pumpkins. And then my last thing to do is to just sign, sign and date it. Now that I finished the watercolor piece and it's dry, it's dry, I'm going to stamp that sentiment. This is a sentiment from Gina K Designs, and I thought it was fitting for this little project. So put it in my Misty and inked it up and I stamped it twice. And here's the sentiment that I chose. So very grateful for all you do. So I could have stopped there, of course, but I just wanted to add a little bit of something, something. So I'm taking my ink pad from my distress ink pad and I'm just rubbing it all along the edges of my card. I'm not, I'm not trying to distress this. I'm just trying to get it on the edges because I'm going to use a paintbrush and pull some of that color back into the top of the card. So as you can see, when I turn it, I'm trying not to touch that, the sides and get it all over my hands. And I just wanted to get some color right along the edges. 
So now I'm going to take a paintbrush and some water, not a ton of water, just a little bit of water, and I'm going to drag it along that edge. And that's going to allow some of that color to pull in to pull into the top of this card, to the sides of the card. Going a little bit more along the edges in the corners, but just nice and easy with a little bit of water on my brush and just pulling that color right out. And then I'll just turn the card and I'll continue to continue to bring it in. This vintage photo is a really cool color. It makes things look antiqued. You could use any color here, but with the colors in the background, I thought it would really enhance the look I was going for. And I was very happy with it at the end. So again, I'm just rubbing the brush against that color on the edges with some water and it's pulling it right into, into my card. And it's very subtle, but I thought it really just added a nice accent to this watercolor piece. And you can continue to work on that or you can just leave it. It's all up to you and how you want it to look. And that's it. So that's our watercolor piece for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was so much fun to create it and I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks so much for joining me. Please click on that subscribe button and here's some more videos for you to take a look at. Thanks and have a great day. See you next time.